level called a chest pass, right? And I used to get them in the face. <laughs> I just wanted to know that she respects the game of netball. What even is a netball? Harrison, you are a freak! This is the sport evolving at its very best. Unbelievable. Can you believe it? It's all over! New Zealand have won the World Cup! No mai ikite hotaka o te nete poro kiwi. Welcome, former Silver Fern Jody Brown and Cruz Tangira, New Zealand men's team vice captain. Kia ora. Kia ora. We've finally got here, just a few days away from the conclusion of the ANZ Premiership. Mainland Tactics take on Te Wangara or Rokoa Pulse this Sunday in Invercargill. We'll chat about that soon. But first, Jody, overall, what have your thoughts of the ANZ Premiership? been this year and the quality of the matches? Yeah look I think I'm really impressed with the quality of the matches. I think um, teams came out of the uh, lockdown point one I think what should we call it or 1.0 um, pretty fit and re ready to go which was exciting to see. Um, I guess throughout the rounds I think by the pulse you could say that all the games are pretty similar in terms of um, I guess uh, the teams being really close close matches. Um, in those first few rounds and I think towards the end you, then you started to see teams um, beat the pulse obviously so then it became um, a little bit more realistic that that was going to happen so I think um, really exciting the intensity has been there the skill level has been there and um, the combinations have been worked through throughout the tournament which has been great um, and hopefully we get a good grand final on Saturday, uh, Sunday. The Steel Magic Stars Mystics, sadly, they don't get the opportunity to underline their seasons with a final game. There won't be any playoffs for them this weekend, courtesy of COVID-19. It's a bit of an anti-climax. The Mystics finished third this season. Cruz, a better 2020 for them, and next year could be a big one for them if they retain most of their players. Yeah, absolutely. 2020 was a, a, a big step forward for um, the Mystics coming off the 2019 season. I think they showed great promise. The young ones in the likes of um, Grace Nwiki and Taylor Earl really stood up to the plate under immense pressure. I think they had a, a, a strong start to the season. Um, as Jody said, they came out of the out of lockdown, um, the first lockdown, should I say, uh, very strong. But they, but the, towards the end of the season, they, they, their um, performance sort of... Um, backed off a little bit. They lost a little bit of intensity um, and they sort of weren't as strong as, as what they started. But uh, such a pleasing uh, performance throughout the 2020 season and they will want to build on that heading into um, next year as well. Mm. Given that uh, Saviour Tui, if they retain her, should have had a year of ANZ under her belt and Mears coming back into the mix next year. Grace Wickier, a major weapon for them. Yeah, I mean, that shooting in next year could be uh, pretty exciting, Cruz. Yeah, definitely. It could be absolutely lethal. And I think um, having a prospect of putting Bailey in at goal attack and even goal shoot and her teaming up with Xavier Tui would be fantastic. And I think that would be an option that the Mystics can look at. Um, and then you had Phil Devui that came into the um, Mystics lineup towards the end of uh, this season and she stepped up to the plate. She wasn't afraid to shoot. She played a really good supporting role too. Uh, Grace, but she also um, came into the circuit and drove really hard in that front space when she needed to. So, yeah, if they can retain those players and then have Bailey back to full fitness, I think they'll be really lethal coming um, the 2021 season. Mm. Uh, Northern Stars finished fourth. They were able to foot it with most teams. They definitely had their moments. Uh, one of those teams that had quite a bit of reliance on the goal shoot, Maya Wilson, having a great season. Jody, where do you think the Stars could improve? Yeah, look, I think um, this season, I think Jamie Hume at goal attack, I think um, out of all the seasons, I think this has been her most consistent season. Um, whether that consistency was good enough, like you say, relying on Maya Wilson quite a lot, um, I think was probably one of their sticking points for the Stars. 
Um, so I would look to recruit around that area in terms of that goal attack area just to take that load off Maya. She did a wonderful job this season. Um, defensively also, I think they were lacking a little bit there. Um, I think Kate Burley and Storm Purpose did a fantastic job with given their height and um, their ability of some of the, the, the um, shooters that they've been playing that were, were taller than them. But I just think, yeah, I think they've got some really good experience through the middle with Grace Cara, whether they retain her for next year or not. Um, and maybe just kind of filling those gaps at, at, at either end just to add a little bit more experience, potentially height and accuracy. Do you think the Stars might have their eye on Tiana Maturo? Yeah, well, look, she'd be the, the best uh, pickup, wouldn't she? Considering if um, the, the Pulse retain their lineup, she, she obviously would be the best um, pickup in terms of that goal attack position, and, and she can slide to that wing attack um, that she's shown throughout the season. Yeah, I think watch this space. I think it's going to be an interesting off season. Mm. The Steel are uh, finishing fifth. Pretty rough for them, losing two thirds of their shooting into ACLs. Jody, one of your former teams, they did say, play some good netball despite that, though, didn't they? Yeah, look, I think that um, Steel probably took a little bit too long to settle into their new lineup. I think they've relied so um, heavily in the past three years of that um, Shannon, Gina, Tapia combination that's brought them through. Um, and with obviously Tapia leaving, I think it's taken them a, a, a uh, far too long to settle um, and I think then once they kind of got into a rhythm then obviously they had their injuries so it's almost like a perfect storm. Um, I think towards the end of the competition we started seeing them picking up some W's, we started seeing them gel a little bit more but I think it probably took a little bit longer than what they'd hoped for um, and look I think the upside is, is that they've brought some new players in, they've developed some players within their region, um, they've got a taste of what it's like to be in the, the big girls netball um, and yeah, I think it's probably one one season they'll probably want to forget, but build on for other reasons. Mm. Magic came in last this year. We're involved in some really tight games, one or two draws in there. Um, Cruz, what were some positives for you from the Magic this year? Yeah, I was lucky enough to commentate a couple of their games, and and there's a lot of positives they can take out of it. I think um, the biggest one is that they were able to contest. Um, obviously, not for the full 48 minutes, but definitely for at least a quarter or two. Um, the likes of, likes of Georgia Tong, who's coming to the Magic uh, lineup this year, she stood up immensely and she was coming up some up against some formidable shooters in the likes of um, Alia Dunn and Amelia Anikonasio, but she really stood her own and she provided a lot of um, support to Irina Makaire. I think um, the word of the season for the Magic would be consistency and um, just making sure that when those pressure, when they are in those pressure moments that they can be consistent and, and know how to um, keep the pressure on other teams. There were a lot of times where they had to lead in front of other teams but couldn't um, ma maintain that for the rest of the game. So I think the Magic, they, they, there's absolutely a lot of things that they can take out of the season. But I think consistency would be the biggest thing that they would want to work on heading into next year's um, ANZ Premiership. Okay, so the grand final this Sunday, Tactics versus Pulse. Pulse, this will be their fourth grand final in a row, so they've definitely got that experience. But Jody, things have been coming together nicely for the Tactics in recent weeks. Uh, what do you think what might be the key for them if they are to get over the Pulse? I think a key for me is for the tactics is that um, shooting in, in particular, to Pia Selby Rickett. I think um, if she can uh, get her game going, if she can get into a flow, she can get into a rhythm, um, pass, cut, shoot, uh, and, and getting the supplying that ball to Bird, but also being that link, I think that the um, Pulse will have a big job on their hands. Um, from the games that I've watched from the Pulse, they tend to have stuck with that one on one defense, so that real intense. Um, one-on-one -on -one style rather than what we've seen most teams go to is that zone kind of defense. So if they're going to stick with that one-on-one, -on -one, then, um, you know, like you're going to have to rely heavily on Kelly Jury to really shut down Bird. So for me, um, we know what the tactics defensive end can do. We know that they're pretty lethal. We know that they pick up ball. Um, and so for me, the real key area for the tactics is how this attacking end keeps going. Yeah. Interesting, as you say, that the Pulse are using that man-on-man -man defence down there, really bucking the trend of that New Zealand zone style. But Cruz, they've got ultra-fit defenders and Katrina Rore and Karen Berger. So they've got the personnel to, to adopt that kind of style? 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, Katrina spoke about it after a post match, oh, in a post match interview, should I say, is that um, they're really the only team that are adopting that man on man style um, rather than the sort of zone defence that New Zealand is so um, well known for. And you can see it's been so effective for them. I mean, other teams are finding it so difficult to penetrate that defensive end. They, they, they cover the, the man really well, but they also can adjust to the space quite quickly as well. So it, it is actually quite confusing for teams when they, when they come up against the pulse. I think for the tactics, as um, Jody was saying, it will really come down to their attacking end and how they adjust to that sort of um, man on man style defence. Um, Tapia, obviously, we know what kind of player she is, and I think if Ali Bird can stand up against that immense pressure, that, that may be the difference uh, for the tactics on Sunday. So, who are you picking? <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> That's so hard <laughs> question. Um, you know what? My heart says the tactics, but my mind says the pulse, and the reason why I'm picking the tactics is because they have such momentum at the moment. They... they um, They've come off some really strong wins. Their last win was obviously against the Pulse. The Pulse probably weren't playing at their best, but that does give them a lot of confidence heading into Sunday. But then, as I said, you can't you can't um, rule out the Pulse. They're such a formidable team. You've said that they've been in the last four finals, so they have that experience. They won last year. So, uh, yeah, I really am sitting on the fence, and I, and I unfortunately can't pick a team. It's going to be a, a great battle on Sunday. Mm. Jody, I guess overall, on balance, you'd say the Pulse are the favourites, but the tactics are, um, they, they seem to be peaking at the right time, so an upset wouldn't really be a surprise? Yeah, look, I don't think an upset will be a surprise. I think, like Cruz said, I think both teams um, are worthy winners, um, whoever wins on, on Sunday. I think, like Cruz alluded to, you've got to think about the the pulse, they weren't on their A game the last time that they these guys played in Tactics 1. They were missing Amelia Anna Canasio, um, and so she's a big key factor for me. Um, and they were also very fatigued. You could watch by, uh, you could tell by watching that game that, uh, that they were very fatigued. And the, the game that we've talked about them adapting is that fitness, that one on one, that relentlessness, and that does take up a lot of um, time and energy. Um, so I um, suspect that they've had, you know, a couple of weeks to regroup, refresh, add Amelia Rand back into the mix. So um, even though I think it's a feel-good story for the tactics, I think the Pulse might get, might get there this weekend. So the Silver Fern squad is due to be named next Tuesday. Uh, Dame Nolene Totoa will be picking between 16 to 18 players. There will also be the naming of the development squad underneath it. I've asked if you could pick 15 players, five for each third for that Silver Fern squad. Let's start with the shooting end. Um, obviously, Bailey Mears is still coming back from injury. Maria Folau retired last year. The incumbents, Maya Wilson, Amelia Rani Canasio, Tapias Salvi Rickett. They're going to need a fourth or, or even fifth shooter. Who do you think might make it into that team? My five shooters I had was, like you say, Maya Wilson, Amelia Ann and uh, Tapia. I also had Bailey Mears in there because I know she's coming back from injury, but we're not sure about what uh, is the Silver Friends calendar this year, so that mm -hmm. might give her time to recover. And then I had Alia done. I think she's done a lot of work on her fitness. I think um, we've seen that throughout the season. I think she, her movement's great. Her accuracy is great. Close second, obviously, with Grace uh, Nwiki. Uh, mm -hmm. But then also you've got to put into the mix about those fitness standards that we know Nolene is so strict on and so um, that is one of her criteria. So I just have question marks around those kind of in terms of the fitness, Grace. Yeah, like you say, I'd be, I would be surprised if Grace Wiki did uh, meet the fitness standards at this point in time. But uh, what, she's only 18, she hasn't built up that kind of base and there's no rush early in the World Cup cycle. Yeah, what about you, Cruz? Yeah, um, yeah. I, like Jody said, I think the shooting in pretty much picks himself. Um, Maya and Amelia would be definitely my starting goal shooting goal attack. Tapia Sabi Rickett, of course, in there. She's been phenomenal this season. Absolutely, Alia Dunn. Um, she's she's so she's showed great uh, performance throughout the entire ANZ Premiership this year. And yeah, I would probably look at Grace Wick here, but I'd also look to someone else to fill that goal attack role. Um, I don't think a lot of other goal attacks have put their hand up 
so to speak, um, as strongly as our shooters have. But those four would be would be my top picks for the shooters um, in the Silver Fern squad this year. Okay, the mid-court incumbents, Gina Crampton, Shannon Saunders, Laura Langman, let's just maybe we assume she comes back from Sunshine Coast, but that leaves us to ponder who might join them. Yeah, that, that the mid-court was definitely was tough for me. I was writing down my, my picks this morning and had to cross out some names Yeah, um, just because I wasn't sure. I think um, what we saw in this season was that a lot of the young mid-quarters really, really stood up to the plate and showed what kind of players they are. Um, as you said, it's the beginning of the four-year cycle, so whether or not Nolene would want to include those players so early on in the cycle is another question. But definitely, obviously, Laura Lang, when you can't, can't go past her. Um, Shannon, I had uh, as well. Um, Kimi Ora, Poi, Maddie, Gordon, and I also had Kate Heffernan. I think she's done a amazing job at wing defence and even when she went into centre for the steal this year she's so rugged on defence she's not afraid to look for the ball and go hunting and I definitely think she stood up to the plate and put her hand up for a uh, silver fern selection. What about you Jodie? Yeah well I, I agree with what uh, what both you and Cruz have said I think mid midcourt was the hardest area to narrow down and, and like Cruz said I had a whole lot of names down it was like crossing them out for all different reasons um, but like you I had Laura Langman there Carden Berger has been my player of the season. So she um, was in there as a uh, midi, um, as a wing defence. Um, so she, which, those two were in there. Then I had the likes of a Whitney Soonis, um, Maddie Gordon, Camille Opoi, but I also had Kate Heffin in as well. I agree with Cruz. I think she's had an excellent season. Her height at wing defence and at centre um, is an asset. And I think she might just be a bolter into that squad. Any room for Sam Winders? Yeah, unfortunately not. I think, you know, she's played her heart out for her team and she wears her heart on her sleeve. Um, but I just think, look, the, the young talent coming up is too, is, is too important not to take notice of and to, to develop in that World Cup cycle. Mm. Okay, defensive end. It's been made a little bit easier with the announcement yesterday that Phoenix Karaka is pregnant. Michaela sokolic beatson is obviously another one coming back from injury. The incumbents, Katrina Rore, Jane Watson. I put Karen Berger under that defensive end rather than midcourt, uh, partly because Phoenix Karak is out now. And we've got uh, the likes of Kelly Jury, Timulisi Fakahokotau coming back from injury. Um, who do you see adding to that, being added to that defensive end, Cruz? Yeah, this was another tough one for me. Um, I think... Katrina and Jane definitely picked themselves. They've, they've been amazing this season and they have showed what quality defenders they are. Um, I've definitely put Tim Lissi Fakakatao in that um, defensive end as well. She is phenomenal. She literally is such a um, an amazing defender and she's so hungry for the ball. You can see it. Um, I also had Sulu in there as well. I thought she's really stood up um, in the last couple of years, but particularly this year um, with the change to the pulse and just leading that uh, that defensive end and I also had Karen in um, the defensive end as well I think she, because she's so lethal in wing defence and goal defence um, and she can change between those uh, positions real easily I, I had her in that defensive end but you can't not have her in your team she's yeah she's a phenomenal player yeah, yeah what about you Jodie new, any new faces or returnees yeah, look, I think um, it's great if we move Karen to the defence and that lets me have another midi, so that, yeah. that's great. <laughs> but, um, yeah, look, I agree. Sulu um, Fitzpatrick has been an outstanding performer for me for this, this season, and I think she deserves um, a recall. Um, I just think she's got experience. She's got nous. Um I would like to see her more up against taller shooters. Uh, really, she only has Ali Bird, I guess, you know, with matching because she's in Grace Nowicki's team. Mm -hmm. Um and look, Kelly has been solid for me. I, 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 um, I think she's still on the comeback. I think she's still got a lot to learn. Um, but I agree, Tim I mean, with under the tutelage of Nolene in that environment, I think they can only bring the best out of her. Okay, time will tell next Tuesday. Guys, I just wanted to ask you if you had caught some of the some court Super Netball in Australia and um, Wondered what your thoughts, thoughts were on the two-point shot. Cruz, uh, were you surprised at how wide that shooting zone actually is? Yeah, I feel like it's more than half the shooting circle um, that that two-point that, that two zone takes up. Um, I definitely think it's taken away the essence of netball. I, I think when it gets into that, um, the last five minutes of each quarter, instead of 
going to the post, like shooters that will have the ball close to the goal goal post, will will look for the goal attack who is obviously standing closer to the circle edge. So I think it takes away, um, yeah, the essence of of netball and sort of adds that fast five element. I, I, I it's been exciting. I definitely think it's been um, good the Suncorp Super Netball. But yeah, for some reason, I'm just, I'm just not really um, liking it as much as other people, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, Jody, what about you? Yeah, I agree. I think um, Cruz hit it on the head. Uh, it, it is just um, it changes the whole game once it gets to that five minute mark. And the the, the games that I've watched, you know, you've got the likes of um, Sam Wallace from the Swiss. She gets it right underneath the post, but then she chooses to pass it back out to Helen Housby to shoot the goal. Um, and like Cruz said, that takes away, I guess, from our, our game of netball in terms, in terms of that more fast five um, play. So uh, whether that's, you know, developing their game, I don't know if we should be, you know, concerned or not, because that's, the, 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 you know, that's them, that's Australia. Um, I am, however, a fan of the timeouts. So I know there's people that don't like them as well. So, um, but I am a fan of those. It has been interesting seeing uh, Australian captain Caitlin Bassett on the bench quite a bit during those five-minute periods. Um, uh, Jody, the franchises can start, uh, back to New Zealand netball, franchises can start signing up players from the 1st of September, approaching other, other players from other teams, all that stuff. How stressful a time was that, uh, that recruitment period? Yeah, I think it, it does become stressful, especially if you're a younger player and you're new to that. Um, and then you're obviously um, kind of uh, talking to a, a couple of franchises and, and you're trying to um, get what's best for you. Um, so it is a stressful um, time. I do um, take my head off to those that commit really early because that takes the stress away um, and that um, it just takes the decision away from that mucky. It, it can get really, really mucky. Um, I can guarantee you there'll be talks going back and forth now between players and, and franchises and all that now. So whether that brings in an added distraction, obviously, to the last few rounds, which we haven't seen, but um, maybe the grand final, you, you don't know. But um, it is a hard time. Uh, but I think if you're true to yourself and you know what you want to do, you know what you want to achieve, um, franchises are um, talking you know, a good game in terms of, of, of meeting those expectations, then it is... Um, simple in the end if that makes sense yeah um difficult for the pulse players or potential pulse players who don't know at the stage who the coach is going to be next year yeah i, I think that's a that's a big one as well knowing who you're going to pay for but i think um you've seen from the pulse region that they've been um, pretty lucky with the uh, caliber of coaches that they have involved in, in their organization that um, you'd like to think whoever they get in there is going to be quite supportive and still going to have that network around them of, you know, like Marana, um and Sandy Edge and all those people that work with the Pulse. So um, I can assure you they won't be getting any old joker in there. <laughs> yeah. um, Cruz, the Cadbury series, haven't heard any announcements yet, <laughs> but um, it sounds like things might be on track for that and the New Zealand men's team might be involved. Do you have quite a few of your players though that are actually based in Australia? Is that going to make it a bit tricky? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, we have five um, current players that are based in Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane, like throughout the, those three states. So yeah, it will make it really difficult. Um, we, we're not too sure. Well, nothing's been confirmed regarding Capri Series, so obviously we don't know um, if it's going ahead. It does look possible, but there's been no official announcement. Um, if those players can't come back from Australia, we, we do have depth in um, New Zealand with uh, our talented um, players that are coming through the ranks. Um, but it'll be a huge step up from what those players were playing to playing against the Silver Ferns in front of a live crowd on a big stage like the Cabri Series. So we can definitely um, put a, a really strong team together to give great competitions to the Silver Ferns, but it will be an experience uh, for sure for those new players that will come into the fold. You've be beaten the Silver Ferns last year. Yeah, if you were to bring in some under-20 men's players, it would still give them an uh, excellent competition, and they might even beat you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They, they possibly could beat us. But again, it would be um, a really good, I think it would be a really good contest, um, not only for both teams, but also for the fans. And if it's the only sort of, um, I guess, um, that kind of netball we can get from the Silver Ferns, then, I mean... We're, we're all winning, aren't we? Like, we don't even know 
what what the um, as Jody said, what the Silver Ferns calendar looks like. I think earlier, or like a month ago or two months ago, they were talking about having a series with England, but yeah, nothing like that has been confirmed either. So. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens and to see um, what the outcome is. If we do play against the Silver Ferns, they probably or might beat us, but um, it'll be a really good contest and, and really good to watch. Oh, 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 oh,